quickly moving on from that just to quickly talk touch this because i've had a few people you know nice enough to reach out and say oh my god i guess you know you are right well done good prediction to be fair i'm not going to take that much credit for this but this is just a story i want to quickly cover this is regarding this um exclusive bit of information i guess courtesy of high snobiety regarding daniel lee's new vision of burberry that should be debuting i think this up and coming um new york london fashion yeah there we go um lee has shared a debut campaign as creative director of the house ahead of his presenting his first collection for the house creative director um at london fashion week later this month so as most of you guys will know i've been speaking a bit a little bit about daniel lee and he is kind of ups and downs when it comes to him being at Bottega veneta and the scandal around that with him allegedly saying something racist in a, in a meeting that the fashion industry kind of swept under the rug to be honest so i i want to i to be fair i'm not really for cancel culture i've always said that in the slight in the first place i'm more of a fan of fans canceling people so if fans decide hey we've had enough of you we don't like what you stand for or what you who you are now and they decide to back away from somebody fair enough but i've always been a bit hesitant to kind of get behind organ to get behind like mass cancellations when organizations and platforms and publications are deciding to pull away from somebody and be the moral moral arbiters for society at large i think we should decide that ourselves and uh, you know for better or worse and i don't think it should be these places because essentially we've all got our own little weird skeletons in our closet and essentially you're kind of you know you're deciding what is what is less worse basically between certain people and i think especially in fashion we should know especially if you're a real fashion head you know there's a lot of people in the industry that have very questionable histories or have done things very questionably before and maybe they should be cancelled too if you kind of look at what people have been cancelled for now so in fact just you know rule out cancelling all, all together but what I was very interested by was the fact that there was no real repercussions, it felt like, for what he allegedly may or may not have done. If anything, more people came after the guy who leaked the news. And obviously, his credibility was kind of, you know, thrown, you know, into question because I think he was also the same guy that came out and said Rocky was cheating on Rihanna. And, and that was, you know, um, that was kind of a dismissed as fake news and people didn't say that was legit so loads of things happened around that but anyway regardless he kind of came out of it unscathed he went away sat down did some yoga um hooked up with some amazing as he's amazing looking flipping ballet dancer who's ripped and jacked and tall and handsome as hell i forgot what his name is um essentially but he's took that time away to kind of center himself get hooked up with a really good looking dude get himself a nice apartment or house here in london and then he got appointed as a creative director of burberry once ricardo tishi unfortunately got told to skedazzle and when the news broke at first i was initially saying that i anticipate the new version of burberry to be quite similar to what he was doing at Bottega Veneta when he was really leaning into this whole like I have black friends thing um you know kind of you could say pandering but it just felt like he was trying to catch a vibe trying to catch some momentum he's basically was doing what Simon Port Jack Moose is doing now where he's essentially discovered that black people exist and cool ones and now he's essentially you know revived his brand when I felt like his brand was dying and was kind of going the same way that most of these kind of you know aspirational waspy um french villagey type things were going because for the most part i remember jack moose was m a lot of the inspiration around jack moose was him getting inspired by friends of his mom if i remember correctly reading old reviews it was like his mom's friends and the ladies around his family and stuff in this you know small idyllic villages with you know really cute people running around wearing flipping pinstripe and no socks and espadrilles and shit right that's the kind of vibe i can imagine but after a while that kind of gets boring and i felt like had a bit of a low period especially around the time the whole acgs were coming out like you know that nike acg collection no one's talking about it anymore it kind of it been and when it was pretty terrible if or if all you know all things considered it didn't even make any sense why jack moose was doing an acg collection of all things like i don't ever see an acg i don't ever see a jack moose girl going flipping um bouldering let alone going on the hikes or running and stuff that's not happening jack moose girls don't run they just you know they drink tequila and they flip in intermittent fast for the most part but they're not gonna they're not bouldering or hiking or anything anyway I did expect Daniel Lee to do the same thing, you know, to kind of continue what he was doing because it, it worked pretty well towards the end. There was that really cool activation or showcase he did at Bottega Veneta at Bergheim during the midst of the p flipping pandemic again. Daniel Lee's got away with murder, you know, just in life in general. Just imagine, like, he did a flipping fashion show in the mid in the middle of the pandemic at Bergheim, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was a full after party with Virgil DJing RIP. I'm pretty sure that happened maybe it happened in um what's the thing called 
ah, uh, what's that place called? There's a whatever um, members club in Berlin. I think it was it took place over there, but you know there was a lot of kind of hype around that. I think Burner Boy was there, Skepta was there, Virgil of course was there, R.I.P. and a few other people. So clearly that was working. Him basically touching upon these cultural icons of the moment who are really kind of hot like fish grease and everyone's big fans of them and it makes sense to kind of carry that forward. And clearly Daniel Lee's doing this with Burberry going forward. So this is courtesy of High Sobriety. Obviously he shared it already on his page but some of the images here, most of them are taken by the iconic and very underrated um, fashion photographer Photographer, photographer in general Tyron Lebon who I mostly know from his work with Stussy but definitely somebody who I feel like doesn't get a prep the praise or props that he probably should deserve but if you're looking at the imagery it does remind me a lot of what he was doing at Bottega Veneta towards the end so clearly he's taken that aesthetic and kind of you know basically copied and pasted it at Burberry so it's going to be very interesting to see what the actual clothes themselves look like once he does actually put them together but there's a lot of iconic you know UK um, people here that he's kind of putting at the forefront um, in terms of leading and spearheading this new campaign for Burberry he's also introduced a new logo here that I'm seeing going forward that's going to be interesting obviously we've seen the trench here seen there I think another lady was wearing the um, what looked like a top with the flipping bra on it as well so there's a lot of that kind of imagery going forward and of course look who we got here we've got Skeppy man like Skepta obviously front and center of the campaign himself and this is a pretty on the spot again I'm not taking any credit for the prediction because I feel like this was pretty obvious that this was going to happen and if you know anything about fashion you know you know the, the most obvious and easy to connect uh, dot people will do that in the you know in the quickest because you know you have to present three or four collections per year why waste time trying to think up crazy new innovative ideas where you can just go for the thing that's right to hand and kind of make that work and especially if they've got a good relationship outside of fashion Daniel Lee and Skepta, it makes complete sense, right? If they're really actually friends, they get along really well. It makes sense to continue that conversation going forward because you would imagine if you're Matteo Blasi at Bottega Veneta, the last thing you want to do is continue having Skepta to be, or people like that to be your kind of figureheads because you want to try and rewrite or write your own chapter in the history of Bottega Veneta. You don't want to just carry on what he's doing. Very rarely have I seen or heard of somebody taking over a house and continuing on with the ambassadors or with the influencers or whoever they're working with that were working with a prior person it's usually you try and change it just so you can kind of you know tell a new and interesting story going forward so that was no surprise that this happened and he took him over to Burberry so it was just to see what happens there just looking from what I can see from the picture here of Skepta he's kind of standing in front of a red background with a black top on it looks like maybe a Sonova coat with a black shirt and this may look like at the bottom left here just underneath the logo of Burberry it looks like this may be like a rose or some sort of tulle thing that it's made to look like a flower so maybe this is what we're going to see in the show going forward but of course we're going to see it very soon okay that may be that rose here he's holding there maybe and maybe that's kind of clipped onto the front of it of the trench itself we've got a picture of Raheem Sterling also and then we've got another picture I think of um I think Shy Girl if I'm not mistaken here as well so clearly there is a change in what's going on. Clearly, we've seen already that they've um, already changed the logo um, of Burberry 2 going forward. Let's play what this video actually looks like. It's got the sound on it. In the rain, it's still I bloom without a tab of doubt. We let it rain and let it pour, secure the showers now. If they start doing all this like spoken word, you know, for the streets, rapping bacar shit, I'm out. I'm out, please. I'm out. I'm out because I don't know what vision of London or UK people have, but I swear to God, the music is far more interested than this. Again, it's just a teaser. I know I'm kind of overreacting, but if it's what we have to hear going forward, if they start fucking playing, I don't know, like reggae and shit or like dub or like ska music when he does his first show i'm going to be screaming from the hilltops because that's not fresh that's not new there's far more interesting sounds and people going forward now that you can kind of latch on to but who knows maybe it's a heritage thing and you're going to be tying it into this like if i see goldie down the runway like come on man like let's try, let's try and create some new legends goldie's done his thing he's done his bit especially for a brand like stussy that's something that I was kind of first, you know, exposed to when I kind of went to get into this thing. So, I, you know, I've got a real attachment to him, even more so when it comes to graffiti and whatever else and DJ culture and everything else associated with that. But still, man, let's create some new legends. So if I see Goldie and that on the runway or I don't know, somebody else, I'm going to be absolutely off, off my tits. I swear to God. But let's continue with this. No. 
Celebrate. Oh yeah, I guess right. It wasn't overcoat. It's some sort of double-breasted number, right? You know, black guys always look good in that sort of shit. To be fair, give a black guy a good shirling coat. Give a black guy a good double-breasted overcoat. Money, like Zara, sell those things by the bucket load every year. A good double-breasted coat, shirling coat. Black boys, Asian boys, we love that thing. We love it. Don't lie. You know you had one. I know I had a couple in my collection. Okay, cool. Fair enough, yeah. There we go. We've got the new logo of it going forward. But let's quickly read the article and see what I'm going what they're saying here. We'll obviously read that bit there. It says, The campaign which has been captured by Tara Lebon, a photographer who's worked with Lee on several occasions, but then Governor is described as Lee's first creative expression. I've seen him tap a cast of excitement. <laughs> what does Chris, honestly, didn't he this guy is a little bit up his own ass isn't it remember when he was at Bottega Veneta they did the whole thing of like removing their social media feed and no was it like an online magazine or something but it was just basically Instagram it was like oh we've got a a different way I don't know whatever 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 sparks a creative spark I guess it is what it is but it continues um it's described as Lee's first creative expression and has seen him tap a cast of exciting talent, including the likes of Skepta, Shy Girl, Liberty Ross. Oh, Liberty Ross, right? Okay, interesting. As well as Chelsea and football England star, sorry, Chelsea and England footballer, Raheem Sterling. Um, Lee's but, uh, Burberry has been described as a modern take on British luxury and a new chapter of the brand. What does that mean, a modern take on British luxury? Are we talking leather polo shirts? Like, why go on for this? Are we talking like satin joggers or some shit? If this turns into like a luxury version of Palace, I'm going to be annoyed. Please don't do that. Please don't go like the tracksuit bottoms of loafers look like. The, no one no one wears that. That's from like, that's like an archetype of an English person that doesn't exist or a British person that doesn't exist. Even up north, I'm, I, I don't see like what people would deem to be chavs wearing tracksuit bottoms of Gucci loafers. It's just not a thing anymore. Um, if anything, most people end up looking like flipping drill rap, especially the kids you know across the flipping country they've all got that you know the white kids might have that flipping funny tiktok haircut with the you know with the mass at the front but they're all wearing the same flipping nike tech track suits and shit no one's wearing flipping you know um ghb bass loafers with you know flipping needles track pants it's not a thing please um and it continues uh Burberry is Monte Confession, the new chapter of the brand by its house itself, which also comes equipped with a new logo that's reworked take on a brand's equestrian night motif that was first used in the de- beginning of the twentieth century. So that's what it's called, an equestrian night. Huh. Okay. Equestrian night things, yeah. Let's equestrian night settings. Not too bad. The logo I'm not I I am actually I actually like, I'm not gonna lie. Um this on a t shirt and a hoodie is gonna probably sell like flipping hotcakes, especially if they do it in a cool and interesting way. I'm definitely sure that's gonna be done um well. Um it's worth noting that the colour the clothing sorry featured in the campaign Baby Tetris product, although the campaign is a vision of all leads. Okay, cool. So none of this stuff featured on this campaign is actually what's going to be showed. It's just heritage stuff, right? Stuff that's already in the catalog, like the trench already we've seen there. Um, another trench, you know, standard overcoat, polo top, sorry. We've got featured on there. And we've got this kind of bra, dress top kind of thing going on there too that Liberty Ross is wearing. So clearly they're keeping everything that's going to be shown under wraps and, you know, whatever. One thing I just don't want to see as a first collection of Daniel Lee at Burberry is is that whatever is too much of this brown cream whatever that tan color is because i feel like that was one of the things that kind of put me off when i first saw ricardo tissue's version of burberry it was just so much of this color was coming down the flipping runway it was hard to kind of really you know uh figure out what was new what was fresh and what was just the same old thing reworked with the same sort of color palette so maybe something fresher than this color palette going forward that would be a pretty good way to introduce it but to be fair it's a bit of a thankless job anyway no one's really done it well in recent years. Um, it seems to be a doomed uh, place. But maybe Daniel Lee's going to be able to show and remind us just why he was such a in-demand and well-loved person, especially in the beginning. You think of those first few collections of Bottega Veneta under Daniel Lee when he was really on it. Those were some of the best collections. And some of the stuff is really tested a lot you know last tested lasted the test of time you think of that original lug boot the original original lug boot with the little lines in the front 
that obviously has been iterated many many times you think of some of the tops the coats the colorways you know even that kind of that kind of snotty green color that he kind of tapped into and made kind of you know a real kind of code going throughout the collections we just see what he kind of does with Burberry and how he basically takes that going forward will there be a color will there be a shape will there be a you know will there be something that will stick kind of differentiate what he's doing between what everyone else has done because you know you look at some of the stuff that Ricardo Tishi did and he's supremely talented maybe one of the most talented of his generation like considering how iconic he was during his time at Givenchy he goes to Burberry and he just turns out some of the most uninspired drab horrendous things I've ever seen in my entire life especially when you consider the amount of stick you know from fashion twitter people people like you know Matthew Williams who I'm a big fan of gets from people right Matthew Williams gets so much you know criticism from people because of his designs but then you look at what Ricardo Tishi was doing at Burberry and you think to yourself there really is no difference if anything Matthew, Tish, Matthew Williams stuff is better and he hasn't obviously got the level of experience that Ricardo Tishi has got in the industry anyway so the fact that he's able to perform able to play at that level with just you know uh uh, the experience he's kind of picked up along the way doing his own thing says more about Matthew than it does about Ricardo and um, yeah I don't think Ricardo thing is a I don't think you lose your talent overnight I don't think so um, I just think maybe Burberry is just such a such a um, overwhelming place to kind of get a grip on it's such a big 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 you know brand to kind of get under your control and make it work that maybe just people just don't kind of figure it out and there probably is enough time especially when you consider the amount of what's on what's on the line um the sales and whatnot going forward they just couldn't risk it so they had to kind of make some changes and obviously with someone like daniel lee waiting in the wings you know maybe the right was always on the wall for ricardo but let's see how happens going forward um let's see hopefully it is a far more interesting and fresh new approach to it let's hope